Hi, we're back again. Uh, Bill and Mary show, or whatever we want to call it. Uh, welcome, welcome. I want to thank everybody out there who watches this all. Uh, the, 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 those of you who do, I'm very grateful. Anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody who signed up to send a note to one of our counselors or one of our campers. Uh, Kim was, uh, she almost fainted. She was just thrilled. So uh, I want to thank you for that too. Uh, I did forget to announce that um, Mary Rita Jordan is in, uh, is in um, Tolebron. Uh, she had not a great time at the hospital with a lot of strokes, and um, she's she's at Solibron now for rehab. Uh, she said she has a long road to go, so I'm sure a, a note uh, or something to her would uh, would be very appreciated. But she called me on the phone. I'm always, you know, I always think if you can still use the phone, there's hope. So she can still uh, she can still use her phone. So if you want to get in touch with her at Solabron, uh, for those of you who are Church Sunday, see I never know what group this is. Uh, I said something about asking people for ideas about sermons or scripture or questions. I got some. Thank you. I'm going to uh, I'm going to pass out paper again this Sunday, and uh, a couple people have cheated and come to me and and said oh, I didn't write it down, but here it is. So uh, I appreciate all the suggestions. Uh, I I don't know if I'll do all of them, but we'll see. I also said I did that because a lot of times in the summer the scripture is not very uh, inspirational and of course I said that on a Sunday before a week where every lesson in the lectionary you could have preached at least one sermon and not more so I decided I'd, I'd just go with one because I knew no one wanted to be there for five hours anyway uh, I'm going to preach out of Mark but one of the Old Testament lessons, which uh, I think is, is one of the grand uh, Old Testament lessons that we really don't deal with very much, uh, we all have it in our head what it means, and uh, that's from Genesis, the beginning of Genesis, chapter uh, we're going into chapter 3. Uh, first of all, uh, to make clear, there are two creation stories in Genesis. Uh, the first one uh, takes up the entirety of uh, chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, and, and it goes through a, a pretty, um, a very ordered way of, um, of creation. Uh, and at the end it says, let us create, uh, the word that's used means man and woman, let us make ma uh, man and woman in our image. And that happens. But uh, the second creation story begins uh, part way into chapter 2 and goes on for a while. And this story is very different. It was written at a very different time in the history of Israel, uh, of the Jews. As a matter of fact, it, um, it's a very early story uh, about creation. Uh, as I said, chapter one is very ordered and, uh, you know, everything's done decently in good order and everything kind of flows from each other. Uh, the next story, uh, it doesn't. Uh, things are things just kind of happen, and um, God's a lot looser than in the first chapter. So um, the lesson begins in uh, 
chapter 3, verses 8. Uh, God, uh, God has done his creating. He has made man out of dirt. Uh, he has created all these animals. And the man says, no, 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 no. And finally God said, well, you know, we need to make you an appropriate companion. Uh, and out of his rib he makes a woman. Uh, who uh, who ends up being uh, named Eve, though she is rarely referred to as Eve in the second uh, in the scriptures. She's usually uh, referred to as the woman. Uh, there are a lot of women in the scripture that are never named uh, because it wasn't seen to be necessary. But we have named her Eve, and so this is the story of them, and uh, God, God goes all out, he makes a garden, it's called Eden, there's just everything in it you could think about, uh, everything's just growing, it's a really great place. Except, my assumption, I think God set himself up for this, but anyway, there is a tree he says you may not eat from that tree. There they are putzing around and having a good time and enjoying all that God has given them. And uh, out of where we, we don't know where the serpent arrives. Uh, so uh, the serpent arrives, an apple is never mentioned, okay? It, in all likelihood, it was not an apple, not good conditions uh, to grow apples in the heat of the mid mid uh, Middle East. But anyway, uh, the snake comes and he has a conversation with Eve and convinces her to eat the fruit. She convinces uh, Adam to uh, eat the fruit. And what I love is what they discover is they are naked. <laughs> and evidently that upset them. So they made some clothes out of leaves and everything. The lesson for today picks up on the evening of all these grand events. My favorite part is it talks about God walking in the garden with the cool breeze on God's face. So this is a very different story. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? Like you could hide from God. He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly shall you go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. He then goes on to tell Eve how, how what difficult childbirth is going to be. I think he could have left that out. 
uh, it is at this part of the story uh, that we get uh, the concept, or at least Augustine did, of original sin. Uh, and uh, somehow out of this story, I think because of the nakedness, uh, Augustine uh, decided uh, that the original sin had to do with sex. I, I, I've not read Augustine a lot and probably couldn't get through it even if I did. And I've never been clear how he got there, except to say that he was, um, he had uh, lived a pretty grand life and then decided to become a priest. And he decided that uh, if he couldn't have fun, nobody else was either. either. And since then, uh, it is a whole uh, original sin is a whole thing that has followed the church, um, uh, has followed people of faith uh, since um, since the beginning. Uh, though it was very much. Um, Christians who really emphasized this original sin. Uh, I don't get, I don't see that in all that, uh, but it certainly was the impetus for um, Roman Catholics baptized very soon after birth. Um, they, now it's now it's different, but initially it was very quickly. Uh, Lutherans, some Lutherans baptize very uh, quickly after birth because of the fear that the child will die and will not go to heaven because the mark of original sin has uh, not been wiped from them. Uh, and a lot of people still believe that's why we baptize children. That's why the church got in the business of baptizing children, uh, to save them uh, from, uh, from going to hell. Many years ago, I had a young woman in my church and um, center point who uh, was pregnant with twins and had difficulty and finally uh, I don't know probably two-thirds uh, through the way of her pregnancy she gave birth um, I went over to the hospital of course was with the family and was with her um, when it was time for her to be with the twins uh, for the once and only time, everybody left the room but me, and so I went with her. Um, it was uh, pretty devastating, uh, of course, much more for her. As I l left uh, the room after they had gotten her out and taken the babies, uh, the nurse said to me, Would, are you going to baptize them? And I said, why? Well, you know, you need to. And I looked at her and I said, no, I don't. I said, there is no, <laughs> there's no sin in this child. Uh, there is no connection than anything that happened in creation. I didn't say all this to her. I just said no and walked out. Uh, the next Sunday I did get up in the pulpit and I did say all those things. <laughs> uh, that I would not work for a God who condemned babies to hell because they had not been baptized. We are not baptized to save us, to save ourselves from hell. We are baptized because God loves us. 
and wishes to be even closer to us. Those babies and every baby and never ever has there been a baby or a child who has been condemned uh, to eternal hell because they were not baptized. And, uh, and Eve was not a wicked woman. You will notice that Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed the snake. And so human beings have changed very little from the time of creation. We really don't like to take responsibility for our own actions. Uh, if there is an original sin, it is probably that um, our overwhelming need to be greater than God, our overwhelming need to be all we need. And um, that's not what the story says. And so the story is always of our need for God. And um, that is clear. God does not desert them. Uh, they are not allowed to stay in the Garden of Eden, uh, which was east of Eden, a good movie. And, uh, but God never stopped taking care of them either. Uh, that's our story till today. God never stops taking care of us. So, um, and it's a good story. Read all of chapter one, two, and three, and four, and see what goes on. It's a great story. Uh, it's a great way to have to talk about God and, uh, and how we live our lives by what we see of God in stories like this. So um, I do want you though, to be careful of, of, of snakes um, and um, because I, I'm not sure I believe God cursed them, but I certainly know they're tricky little critters. And uh, so uh, just be careful. Take care. Uh, I guess we'll do this again next week. Uh, goodbye. Love y'all.